Hey, everybody. Welcome to Perpetual Motion, a podcast for lifelong learners interested in improving their communication skills, relationships, finances, and wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Mo Anderson, and my guest this week is Inessa Ponomario Vaiti. Correct me. She'll correct me later, but <laughs> it's a beautiful name. You have to see it to really appreciate it. She is the visionary founder and CEO of Nessa's Hemp, the world's first ever full-spectrum full CBDA oil. As a renowned expert in the field of hemp and CBD, as well as a caring holistic healer who is actively changing lives, her mission is to revolutionize and empower people by transforming their concepts of health and the healing power of pure hemp and CBDA. If you've been wondering how or if CBD and hemp products can truly help people with certain health issues, or if you're curious about the difference between CBD, THC, and hemp, stay tuned and let's all learn more about this rapidly growing industry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome, Nessa. Thank you so much for having me here today. I was smiling when you were pronouncing my last name. And you <laughs> did an amazing job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. As you know, I've been practicing. So it, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, name. What origin is it? I'm from Lithuania. I was born and raised in Lithuania. And I came in the United States at age 21. And uh, end up staying here, and today I'm a citizen of this beautiful country. And, Exciting! Uh, absolutely a big patriot. Would do anything for our people here. Beautiful, beautiful. And again, as uh, they say in my in my favorite play, uh, immigrants we do it right. So, <laughs> have you seen <laughs> Hamilton? That's from Hamilton. There's, if you haven't, you want to see it because there's a there are several great songs and allusions to that, and. Uh, you know, I'm a patriot as well. God bless America. So let's let's talk CBD, hemp, and all things good. But I want to start with your journey. You shared when we spoke before that this journey began with a difficult call from your mother. Do you mind telling us about that call and how it changed your life? I would say it changed a lot of people's lives, not just my life. Okay. Today, a lot of people are working in life and and living with zero fear because of what happened to me and my family. But yes, um, you know, when I started in this country, um, I first of all, I stayed here because I had a love story. And the love story didn't go too well. And in fact, ended in pretty dramatic, interesting story. But I chose to see this as a positive thing in my life because it made me stronger, made me better, made me just better in any possible form and shape. So with that being said, while I was going through the struggles, I also had my health. Um, I was really struggling with my health. I had lots of health issues and I was I was taught that I need to go see the doctor and give all the faith truly to their hands and, and say, please save me. So, and they would do only one and the same thing all the time. It just gave me more pills, more drugs, and, and that's it. Right. So after 10 years being absolutely miserable, got to the point where I was really, really unhealthy. I was barely able to function. Um, I truly, I said, this is can be reality. I need to do some changes. So I tried to change like a lifestyle, my diet and things like that. And I saw some little improvement that got me super excited because when you're so sick, the little tiny improvement does a big difference. Yes, I know. <laughs> so got me super excited and I really went all the way in and within one year, I was able to transform my health from being absolutely sick like a vegetable to young and finally healthy uh, never sick again, uh, woman. But so that was all great. But what happened that moment of my life planted a seed in my brain and my heart that the God gave us natural remedies, foods to really help ourselves because our bodies are very intelligent. We just need to give the right tools. 
So what I decided to do, do nothing about it. And I was really trying to figure out my life, focusing, and I finally did figure out my life. And when I got my whole life, I would say perfect, that would look perfect on a piece of paper where I was able to achieve my American dream. Uh, I was like, this just can't be it. Like, I'm like age 26, 27, 27, 28 that time. And I said, I, this just can't be American dream. Like, you just have a comfortable life, good car, nice home, savings, putting away, building career. I want more of it. And not financially, but something more fulfilling. And I just went to talk to my boss because I knew he was very smart. And I said, please tell me, I don't feel like I'm fulfilling the purpose in life. He's like, what do you mean you're not fulfilling the purpose? You're the best agent in our company. You're doing the best from everybody else. Like, what do you mean you're not fulfilling? I said, no, something is missing. And what happened is, uh, I just, he said that I should go home and relax because I truly have a good life. And I couldn't relax because I'm like, why? I feel like something is missing. It's like a hole in my chest and I need to fill that hole to be happy. And I just decided to ask God and I said, God, what's my purpose in life? So he didn't give me any answers. So I decided to be very persistent the way I am by nature in life. I uh, was extremely persistent, consistent. And I was asking God every single day, what's my purpose in life? And... I received that most beautiful, powerful, life-changing phone call from my mother. And she was living, she still does in Lithuania. And she told me that she does have cancer, six months left to live. And basically, she was going to be gone. And wow. as she's telling me that, I was literally having tears of joy and saying, Mom finally god answered my prayers and she got really confused <laughs> yeah i'm confused so <laughs> what hell? what did you say next she first of all she knows i'm not drinking and she knows i'm not taking any drugs and she knows i'm mentally extremely stable because she was so confused where she said what could happen to her. So she wanted to FaceTime me because she truly thought that I'm like walking, sleeping and talking the way I used to do when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I got to FaceTime you. It's like, please do. <laughs> so she faces time me. I'm in the kitchen making my smoothie ready to go work out seven o'clock in the morning. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, mom, you don't understand. I just saw the vision. So vision, me dedicating everything towards cancer, every single life, minute, day, time, birthdays, I don't care what it is, and knowing everything about cancer. And I said, I already see the vision of you being healthy, mm -hmm. clean, safe, happy, and using this knowledge with other people so we can free them off of disease. Because I knew immediately I'm not going to do chemo. I don't want to do radiation because I... I really lost trust in the medical route because what happened to me? Okay, wait, let me let me jump in there because you never said your diagnosis. You just said you were sick and and weak and so forth. So you had cancer as well before your mother. I had ovarian cancer stage one, which is, was okay. very easy. Mm -hmm. And I also had, uh, I started when as it was, it was a kid with UTIs and it turned into kidney major infections. Ah, okay. Um, so mutated. So mutated cause more problems, small gotcha. tumors and things like that. And also my lungs. I had a bacteria that pneumonia wasn't completely cured years ago mm -hmm. when I was a kid. And that mutated into major lung infections, got to the point every time I breathe, uh, I coughed to the point. I was just couldn't breathe anymore because there was like, if you, if you breathe, you cough, if you cough, you cough more. So right. it's like nowhere to go. And mm, doctors put okay. me in the steroids, but those steroids led me to more situations that was absolutely horrible. And so, yeah, that's why I said I helped myself. And since then I never been sick again in my life. Okay. Okay. Even COVID never really affected me. So, so you get this but, call from your mom now and you're ready to go. You, you're suiting up. She probably, I would have thought you were in shock if you were sounding happy talking about a smoothie. And as my child, I just told you I had cancer. That's why I would have wanted to FaceTime me because I'm like, okay, she's probably in shock. She's hallucinating. I don't know what's going on. 
That's exactly what she thought. She's like, I got a double check on her and she's so sad. And, and I said, mom, your life is truly saving lives right now, but you're going to change the world. You should be celebrating, dancing, the most beautiful things about to happen mm. in our life. And that's exactly what happened. And, and we just laughed with my mom today because we literally were talking like, do you remember how these doctors told me I'll be dead in 27 hours if I'm not going to do radiation and chemo? It's like, look, it's been <laughs> years and years now. So, um, so what happened is, yes, I helped my mom and I was very happy about this. So when I returned, because I left the country immediately, seven in the morning, she called me seven PM. I was already in the international airport standing, leaving the country. Yeah, I, told I don't boss, doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, I told my boss, I don't know when I'm coming back. I don't even count on me at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I left the country. And I, when I came back, when we got diagnosis free, I truly spent 27, I was counting on our day, 27,000 hours on cancer research globally, including worked in, in, in Mexico, at, in Tijuana clinics, where they do have different cancer treatments. Right. Um, so with that being said, that led us to success. And, but that at the same time led me to be need to share with the world. And what I did after my work hours, I, everybody who had cancer, friends, neighbors, anybody, I would just go in their homes and teach them everything what I learned. And as I was learning more on the top, because I got so addicted to this knowledge, so I couldn't stop learning. And I was teaching these people and all these people started getting better. So now I got to the point where six months later, like I'm finishing 12, 30 in the morning, 1 a.m. And I need to get up five, go my business on the side I was building and the corporate or like financial services I was doing at 9 a.m. office job. So, and mm -hmm. I have this help volunteering until midnight every night. And I'm like getting toasted. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to do now? And I was very sad because I said, I can't function anymore because I help these people. They get excited. I get excited. I want to help people. So I literally had to quit my job to, to do the consulting services and to do this full time. But in the beginning, I was so afraid. And I told my mom, I said, I might need to quit my job. So, but long story short, as I did, and I helped thousands of people since then. Now we're transforming lives left and right uh, from all kinds of symptoms and right. disease. And we, we just have an amazing track of record. But what happened, I learned also about quality, if it's water, if it's herbs, essential oils, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that whatever they say, that doesn't mean it's truth. So that it's my job as a responsible person to know what's in these products or or, or herbs or plants or even teas, uh, I had to know what's really inside. So in order to know what's in the inside, I have to have my own testing. But then what is the definition of testing? What are we testing for from one microtoxin or hundreds of microtoxins? Right. You know, so, and that's how they enter the cannabis industry because I already knew the essentials of cannabis or hemp. And I learned about human endocannabinoid system. They don't teach you that in medical school. And that's one of the most essential systems that God gave us to right. regulate hundreds of other systems in our body. And then I'm thinking, all what we need to do, just empower human endocannabinoid system, create a new production again that we've been missing because we've been exposed to stress, toxins, metals, and all other things. I, I said, this, this plant is essential to us. It's, it's, we must have it. So I really put research and I picked the number one marketed companies in America. I contacted all of them and I said, I want to know everything about your product because I want to promote and I want to make sure the product is good. More questions I had. Instead of getting more answers, more questions I created. They probably they probably shut you down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here before we get into the industry because I do have some questions later. We're gonna come back to that, but I want to start for people who because we're throwing a lot of terms and stuff out here, and I don't want to lose anybody. Because like I'm in Texas, and in Texas, medical camp medical cannabis is is legal, but uh, 
for very limited circumstances and, and, you know, businesses sell it throughout as long as the THC concentration is low, but we don't know a whole lot about it in Texas unless you're getting it from your dealer because, you know, it's not openly discussed. It's all this underground thing. So I want to start with 101. If you'll just define uh, the difference between uh, THC, hemp, and CBDA. So as we go on, everybody kind of understands what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, thank you for a great question because I think the whole fear is created around this hemp because of THC, mm-hmm. but there is no THC in the hemp plant and there's no CBD in the hemp plant. But what I want to do, I want to make it super easy for everybody, if you scientist or just someone who just, you know, understands basics, the whole hemp, CBD or THC, no matter what it is, industry, it's called cannabis industry no matter right. what you sell anything related towards that topic it's cannabis industry right now cannabis industry is separated in two legs one leg you have a hemp plant and the other leg you have cannabis plant on the hemp plant a lot of times you're supposed to have high levels of cbda or C- you call cbd and very low levels of thc Mm -hmm. THC is the compound or that specific particle that actually makes people high. And that's why psychotropic part. Yeah, exactly. So that part, that specific THC, those levels barely found in the hemp plant or supposed to, I mean, people don't listen and do whatever they they want to do business owners, but the cannabis is really more towards very high levels of THC and barely or almost none of levels of CBD. And CBD does not make you high. So again, cannabis makes you high and the hemp doesn't. But then just like human body, each plant- uh, Isn't cannabis the plant and THC makes you high? You said cannabis makes you high. The, The cannabis plant contains a lot of THC Right. Because that's what they're there for. I mean, that's how they categorize these two. And right. the cannabis is loaded with THC levels, very high. I mean, the engineering right now to up to 50% and people oh, wow. are going through psychosis and they have oh, an wow. issue in the industry. Like, that's why I'm trying to educate people as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, so cannabis itself, it's an extreme danger levels, becoming danger levels of THC. Okay. And that's why I said cannabis is, that's all what is known for is THC levels. Right. Okay. So, okay. yeah, if you go the hemp source, a lot of times if the company is honest with you, they, they're supposed to have very low levels of THC. So you're not going to get high and hopefully not tested positive and not, and you're going to be able to pass your drug test. So, so those are two different, right? Now we understand mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's additional thing where they don't want you to know that there is no CBD in the hemp plant and there's only CBDA and CBD. If you're going to go on smart Google, smart Google going to tell you that CBD today is recognized as a drug for epilepsy. It's called Epidolix patented by food and drug administration yep that's the only one that's approved by the fda i read this week too yeah exactly but then my question is that's where i really got concerned and tricked and tried to figure it out and go all the way to the to the rabbit hole we know you can't patent nature we know you can't patent something that's natural, like spinach, avocados, or superfoods. Right. So if it's patented as a drug, then what it is, like where it's coming from, how it's made, how you can make that happen. So then I got super curious because when I traveled the industry and companies and tested everybody, sent it to universities and laboratories, I was just a police officer, um, basically going through the entire cannabis industry, uh, you know, what happened is I said, if all these people selling a drug, 
that does have zero regulations today on the quality, which is super scary. They'll very. talk about very <laughs> scary stuff is happening there. I, I, I can't wait to educate audience, to be honest with you. So what's happening, if they're selling this drug, so what is in the plant? And they start studying the chemistry of the plant, and there is no CBD. There's a CBDA, CBGA, mm -hmm. THCA. THCA doesn't make you high, by the way. Uh, it's all those acidic cannabinoids. And okay. the acidic cannabinoids are way more powerful and stronger on your own endocannabinoid system that is responsible to regulate your entire body, including your brain. Okay. And your central nervous system. So now I'm realizing I have a problem because everybody on the market sells CBD that is not even tested from anything. And the CBDA is like not a known compound. Nobody talks about it. Nobody does it. So I decided to connect with the top world leaders and to figure out if it's me not doing enough research or they are aware of what's going on and I just want to get their feedback. So I connected myself to Dr. Rafael from Mishulam from Israel. He's the one who discovered human endocannabinoid system that is one of the most essential systems in our body 40 years ago. And yep. of course, he didn't answer to me multiple times, but I was very persistent. And three months later, he finally called me back. And when I saw the call coming from Israel, I was in the car wash, an automatic one. So my wheels are already locked and I had to pull back as fast as I can and break my car and wheels and everything uh, just to answer the phone call because I was so terrified. I'm not going to get him back. And he phone. wouldn't call back again. Yeah. I don't blame you. I would have done the same thing. I thought another car wash people hated that. <laughs> Okay, miss this one after three months trying to hunt him down. So when I answered, he first asked me what university calling from because he already talks to us about top top science departments and sci and scientific research. And I'm like, I'm very sorry, but I'm not from any university. I'm just here investigating entire industry, including testing products, visiting these facilities, and I just find out a lot of information that I want to confirm with you. And and he truly agreed with everything what I saw in the industry and he had exact same concerns. That's why he, whatever he shared with me personally, uh, even he passed away, I still don't want to talk about and put anything bad about the industry from his mouth, but he shared major concerns and mm -hmm. he shared exactly what's happening today. And I, I saw that future is coming and it's, it, 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 it did came. So now i said what do you want me to do he said do you know any company who does contain every single compound in the most purest form to the finished bottle he said young woman i know you're very ambitious i wish you best of luck if you ever come to the company like that please let me know i'll be the first one to talk to them but i really don't know how to help you and i really have to go i'm like oh no so <laughs> so he basically left me hanging there and I said, I can't give up on this. This is the most essential plant in the human history. And there's not a single one company doing what's right. But he confirmed because as an expert, even though he didn't give you anything, he confirmed that your research was correct, what you were finding in addition to it not being regulated, that no one was doing what you are now doing. He did confirm loud and clear. Okay. And, um, in fact, a couple of years later, when I finally developed my product, right, actually three, four years later, when I developed my product, when we had COVID, his assistant, he said, they trust only one product on the market to be taken in the family, in the family members. So I sent a bunch of products to Israel, mm -hmm. right, when COVID started. So that was like an honor for me when these people said, we just trust you more than anything else out there. Wow. So yeah so but my i said i can't give up like he literally left me hanging so what i did i found this number one cannabis expert dr alif from harvard mm -hmm. Stanford, the most truly psycho genius i'm not gonna lie this man is the most intelligent doctor scientist researcher i ever met and i talked to brilliant brains on the planet yeah and i said dr alif 
I admire your work. I need to talk to you. There's a problem in the industry. I need to talk to you. And where are you calling from? You sound like a crazy person. I don't want to talk to you. Boom. He hung up on me. I was like, you can't hang up on me. Like, that's a bad idea. I need to find out. <laughs> so I find out he was doing the panel. He was speaking a panel in California. And three, four weeks later, I flew in California because I saw his graphic. I saw his last name that he's speaking on the panel. And I'm like, I'm going to be able to chase him down right after the panel. And that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Dr. Leaf, you remember me? He's like, no, I don't. I said, you hung up on me. I said, oh, I do now. <laughs> uh, so, and I was, I was thinking if he hangs up on everybody, he still wouldn't remember, but he did. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Exactly. Exactly. So we end up sitting in the lobby for three hours, four hours and talking. And he also agreed in all the concerns that I had and, and everything. And he truly wished me best of luck. But at least he, he said, if you're going to decide to take this route, I don't know how you're going to be able to do it. But I wish you best of luck. And ta-ra-ra. I said, sounds great. I said, can I follow up with you? And he said, absolutely. Yes. If I ever need it. So just don't hang up on me again. Right. It's like, no problem. So long story short is I went to into the works and what I find out, I find out that we never had high levels of THC in thousands of years of the history of this plant. So the THC levels, when I start analyzing all the genetics and talking to all re-engineered genetics and cannabis industry, I learned that these genetics, not even original genetics, all of them re-engineered and created as a high level THC. So I started connecting people all over the world. Some of them didn't even speak in English. So I had to get the translators uh, and people that helped me to communicate with them. And what I learned that also, if you want to grow hemp for medicinal purposes, you have to be beyond extra careful because a hemp is a soil cleaner. It literally, it's like a sponge. It grabs every single particle from the air and soil. It literally, it's like a magnet, attracts every possible toxin, parts per billion, parts per trillion. So now I'm thinking, if you want to grow this hemp, so you have to have a good soil, like right. beyond good, not even organic. Right. Organic is not going to work here. It's not going to pass. So I said, what soil are we going we gonna to grow? Because we want this plant expressed in the highest frequency, which is medicinal frequency. So I had to learn what soil we had 2,000 years ago. And because that's how we grew hemp 2,000 years ago. And that's exactly what I did. I, I actually got a script. I picked my script and it worked in every farmer that was marketed as focusing on a good, healthy soil. And I knocked their doors and I said, my name is Anasa. I'm looking to create the healthiest, cleanest soil in America to grow hemp plants. And said, can you please tell me you're willing to do this project with me, but we're not going to make any money in the first two years. We're just going to create the best soil for the people. So we know for sure, because the industry is doing everything opposite. I was like, you crazy woman, go away. So it's like, I'm not, what do you mean? We're not going to get paid. It's like, that's exactly what I mean. We're not going to get paid. We're just going to invest our own money but we know by end of the day when the soil is ready to go we're going to have the cleanest soil in america so we can grow these beautiful medicinal plants so yeah i think it took me 12 13 14 farmers to go through and then i met the crazy farmer the good I, one i was gonna say that's that's not much of a pitch i i like the outcome but you're not gonna get paid especially for farmers uh with all the work that they do so it would take someone with with who met your passion for this project to to do it but you found someone in what country was he in he is actually in oregon okay sweet sweet yeah he is in oregon he agreed to do and he said anything what it takes for humanity uh, money is not everything and you're right i know all the dirty secrets about this industry makes me cry and I was like, oh, my goodness, I just want to kiss you, hug you, squeeze you, do whatever. Let's start. So right. and that's exactly what we did. We really helped each other to comment, make, you know, to discussions and open each other's eyes. And as I said, like I 
participate in the harvest processes and things like that. Yeah, we create the biological soil. So where one teaspoon of, uh, of in the soil it contains more microbes than the entire world of people. And, and it's super living, beautiful. We deactivated the chemtrails and, and we got the cows from Japan, 19 generations, no vaccination. So we can have a healthy microbiome to feed the soil mm -hmm. uh, with the waste. So with that being said, it, it took me two years. But yes, I was able to develop that beautiful, healthy soil to grow beautiful girls and, 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 and then a beautiful extraction process that doesn't contain any possible chem chemicals oh and the solvents. And we're able to actually make first miracle happen, which is we're able to put all hemp compounds as they are living in the soil, do you know they have certain frequency? Right. We're able to put all of them to the finished bottle. So we literally have a heartbeat of CBA, CBGA, and another millions of millions of compounds that are never been even discovered. Wow. So it's the whole structure of the hemp in the finished bottle. And the saddest thing for me was in the industry to see how companies taking an advantage of people not knowing Let's let's talk about that a little bit. You've mentioned well, you've mentioned their dirty little secrets a couple of times, and I know that that's a topic you discuss. So to distinguish your product even more, and and what you just described with soil, I'm a biology major, and and I know what we've done to the soil uh, over all these years, leading to the toxins that are present there. But to hear that you were able to extract them and have biological soil, that's just uh, so fascinating to me. But what are some of the dirty secrets of the industry? Because you've mentioned that a couple of times. What I, We know it's all about money. It's, it's a billion-dollar industry. And I, along with that, I want to know what Delta 8 is because that's all over Texas. And, and I've read some horrible things about that. But I'll stop talking because you, you've got some great expertise mm -hmm. here. But those are my questions. Yeah, it's... Even someone is using cannabis or CBD, I really want these people to sit down and I'm just here to educate you. So don't yes. pass out because I'm talking right now because this is really dirty. And I was trying to be nice when I said little dirty secrets. Um, first of all, we have zero regulations to keep any possible cannabis, hemp, CBD, whatever the company accountable for anything. Okay. That means... You can do whatever you want to do and nobody's going to keep you accountable for. So it gets to the point that first, keep in mind, we have that essential human endocannabinoid system. If we empower that endocannabinoid system of all Americans today, half of the country will be off the pills in the next 90 days hmm. just by empowering human endocannabinoid system. That topic itself today is federally still illegal to educate or talk or promote. So that means it's it's not legal for you to really know about your own most essential organ in your body. So now what I have to say is now we have this CBD where the whole industry is pushing and that's exactly what doctor, mm -hmm. no, I'm not gonna say which one, but one of the doctors had a concern that they can allow these business owners promote the CBD compound, the molecule that belongs and is a property of pharmaceuticals as of today. And they're going to pull it back when in, they're going to have enough of market share. And that's exactly what they start to do this year. So first of all, you, if you take CBD, you're not taking natural compound, you're taking C, CBD drug. That's number one. In order to get CBD drug, you have to extract CBDA through solvents, gases, and high temperatures that are not healthy for the plant and you and your organs to turn into CBD. Mm -hmm. So if you do this process, that itself is already unhealthy. And as you know, the whole country sells CBD. So now we're getting into the weeds. And this is what gets really scary. These products on the market today don't contain barely any batch number that actually is linked with lab results, okay? So wow. that means these products are sold 
the heavy metals i tested i never found a product as of today on the market that doesn't contain mold and heavy metals not single oh. one okay? oh wow yeah. and i when i went in colorado and i did my investigation on the largest not gonna say the name largest hemp producers and also usd certified for the whole foods producers produce producers I said, dear brother, do you know that your your hemp contains a load of actually metals? He said, we are negative in parts per million. And if you stupid testing in parts per million, too bad for you, because organic certifies everything in parts per million. I'm like, but human body functions parts per trillion. So we need to have a... So People think if you're going to just contain this and please the USDA organic logo, that means you don't have to go extra step to keep these products healthy and clean. So they have an excuse that organic doesn't require them to test additional things. So they're just going to stay on the bare minimum level to show you that they they have nothing in it while they're loaded. So... Well, and that's then, that's that's always the excuse. We didn't break the law. We met the regulations and the rules. It's the that's the excuse for everything. Exactly. It's appalling. It's appalling. And then it gets extra scary. The extra scary when you know you're taking a drug that's loaded with mold, metals, and all kinds of other microtoxins. That's what really gets scary when you call the laboratory and you say, "I want to test my product." And first thing they ask you, how you want your lab results to look like. Isn't that exactly. standard, standardized? You get to customize your lab results? I personally did only because I created completely new standard in the country that no one can reach until today. It's been five years. I'm challenging every company in the world. I said, don't talk. Just do what I do and show me your lab results. <laughs> show me the receipts. That's, yeah, that's what exactly. GSC says. Yeah. So, but no, what I was trying to say here, and I'm so sorry if I'm confusing, but because I know you probably don't expect this right no, now. No, you're not, you're not confusing. I, I'm loving this. I'm just making sure everything is, I'm just jumping in for clarification periodically, but no, you're, you're explaining it very well. The saddest is that laboratories in America today, they would take your product, they would ask you an extra couple hundred bucks to make the lab reports to look the way you wish. The only one laboratory in this country that failed my test, because I was calling all of them and saying, can you do some adjustments if I have mold? Can you do this if I have metals? And it's like, yeah, we'll need to discuss the price and everything is possible. The only one laboratory in this country said, be not going to settle our integrity and be going to report the laboratory results as it is in your bottle, in your product, to the public. It's called ACS Laboratory in Florida, only one in the country. Good After for them. Hundreds of laboratories. Good for them. Yeah. They're wow. losing a lot of business. They are losing so much business. Do you know why? Because the CBD companies come, they're positive for all kinds of different very dangerous substances in there and the laboratory says we're not going to change your lab results we're going to report as it is and we're going to print to the copy and they said i don't need that you better change it i'll pay you money or i'm going somewhere else and that's how they lose business because these companies cbd companies going somewhere else mm -hmm. wow well, who's going to change their lab results so now as a consumer say you know i met this inessa from nessa's ham she educated me that I should be taking only full spectrum, biological, healthy, beyond organic CBD hemp extract because it's so healthy for me to empower my own endocannabinoid system. You go to the shop, any kind of type of shop, cannabis anywhere right now that where it's regulated and is allowed to sell, and you mm -hmm. say, please show me laboratory results. If some companies bother, they will show you something. But yeah, first they have of all, them, they have them online. I mean, they boast about it. But now that I hear what you're saying, I'm just bewildered. Like, it doesn't mean anything then from what you're saying. Wow. It doesn't mean anything. And that's mm. the saddest part. So when people ask me about regulations, the first thing I want to do, regulate the laboratories. Because if they gave you false information, they should be counted. Because we count on them 
to give a real data. And if they're right. lying because they would take extra couple of hundred bucks and you sell this dangerous substance to pub public, I mean, we have major problem from the soil to the drug. Nobody wants you to know about the CBDA because it can be patented. It can be owned by anybody. It should be in the grocery stores in the produce section. That means everybody should have hands on in the backyards and everywhere else to stay healthy. And no, but none of that stuff is happening. In fact, genetics changed so far and so far away. We're good luck to really figure out where is original genetics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the plant I, I, is essential. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. And I said, and the plant is essential to us today to mm -hmm. survive and be healthy and to thrive in our life is essential, just like air, water, and food. Yes. Those are, those are very essential. And, mm -hmm. and the, the other part of that question was the Delta eight. And I asked because here in Texas, which, you know, we've got a massive population and, uh, I, I think it's synthetic, but I'm not, are you familiar with the product? The 100%. It's all, all of them. There's, there is no Delta eight in the plant. They reconvert the THC, recreate all these THCs in multiple scenarios. It come up Delta nine, Delta eight, Delta everything. It, and everybody's new hype this year, Delta 9, Delta 8. They'll be creating psychosis in this country because of this cannabis industry. And they say, yeah. you guys wanted this herbal plant for you to be healthy, da -da -da, for all healthy eaters. Mm -hmm. No, dear government, we don't want your version of the plant. We want God's version of the plant that you don't want even, and you don't even dare to tell us about that version. In fact, you're criminalizing even the subject on that version. Wow. Wow. So we've heard what you're doing, the extremes you've gone to it and bless you for your persistence because I mean, that's been a mantra in my life as well. I just don't give up, especially when I feel like, the information is going to help a lot of people, not just me. So I love uh, that you've gone in so hard on this, but um, is your product Nessus Hemp, the CBDA, can we get that anywhere? Or can I get it in a state like Texas where I live, where certain things, a lot of things aren't legal? Or is it only just in certain states where it's approved? How does that work? We truly sell in every single state and we ship from, I mean, people purchase online. Yes, we sell it in doctor offices, but it's not worth it for you to fly in Chicago, find a doctor offices. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know. I kind of love, I kind of love Chicago, <laughs> but no, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Here in the summers, we'll take in by the water and you have some good time, some healthy snacks and juices. But no, Chicago is a beautiful city. We just have a lot of sadness going on itself, but the city itself is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, we sell online, but what happens is I'm talking about CBDA. I'm talking about THCA. That's what we have in our product. Those doesn't make you high. They don't even have a category. You know, when we became famous for the first time ever, after I've been in this for over five years, pushing, drilling, dripping my blood and trying to educate everybody and say, come back 10 years from now, because nobody even understands what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So we became famous when Oregon University did the research for COVID, what can possibly prevent for people to get COVID? And they came up with one answer, the proven science that actually blocks your receptors is CBDA plus CBGA. They wow. had science to prove that your body cannot get infected by COVID if you take this. And that was right when they actually rolling the vaccines. Do you think they wanted the subject to be all over the place? Absolutely no, because nobody can own this except you, me, people, humanity, and nature. Mm -hmm. So what happened is every news channel called me out and they literally, my PR team was so busy. <laughs> like my PR, thank God, my, one of them is like worked in NBC half of her life. So she, she was able to handle the situation right. because I was literally asked by every channel, including I was interviewed on high times with the same doctor from Israel because everybody called him or me to get the answers. What is the CBDA thing going on? 
where's this came from because we don't even know what cbda is while i was like already fully in in this in the subject so what happened they became cbd topic became famous uh, but then all the science starts really looking towards that subject and now they're trying to discover more and more and they did discover that cbda is thousand times stronger more powerful more effective for epilepsy central nervous system i mean it's way more powerful than cbd but the funny part is when i did these interviews with the top mainstream media every 15 minutes everyone else was scheduled some of them actually changed my interview from video to um to actually a text and they cut off half of my information because i was sharing exactly what i'm sharing today mm -hmm. that cbd is not controlled substance doesn't belong in any category that's what i said we can ship all over the country we have no category for this mm -hmm. we have no regulations it's superfood so and that's the moment where i realized this industry is going to be completely against me probably for the rest of my life and but the good news we spread the word people learned about it and the funny part was like some very famous doctors on tv that you see them like dr oz channels and things like that mm -hmm. they became a cbda producers within next two weeks after the news came out and i'm thinking how you guys created cbda in two weeks it took me two years just to make the soil and I'm like, I'm like sitting and wondering what's happening here because there was another hype for them, COVID and CBDA, science showing you, proving you, you can actually prevent yourself from getting, you don't understand how big of the market it was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the moment where CBDA became, a, a, be highlighted. You know, and the sad part, again, the news never reported my full interviews. And I said, okay, maybe it's my accent. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's my former accent. Maybe it didn't like my something. I don't know something about me. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it was a combination of the liability uh, and who their advertisers are. And just it typically tends to be about the money. Well, we will be uh, releasing this uh, podcast in full, every every single word of it. We might take a couple of my ahs and your nose out, but that, that'll just be... <laughs> That'll just be to make me sound more professional, but you know, it's uh, it's interesting whether you're talking about genetically modified fruits and vegetables or the water in Michigan and Detroit. It is it is interesting what news outlets and and other sources of information for people. Even you know when we hear stories about opioids i'm real big on fighting the opioid crisis and what the sacklers did and that the you know they had somebody in the fda that they were able to get to approve language that distinguished their product from other products when it really wasn't that way so we have to look at everything with the critical eye i hate to say but i i am very open to hearing from different sources because so often we find out that the things we've been told and that we believe that we thought people just naturally would be looking out for our interests as a general public and and they're not so this is a as far as i'm concerned another source of information you're passionate i'm sure you've got the data to back all of this up so i'm fine with it i hate that happened to you but here you are and we know that nessa's hemp is doing great you can get it all over the united states it's a superfood as you as you said is it available globally as well we're working on the global and the funny part also, politics in Europe, after three years working so hard to pass like a documentation and proving process because, you know, our product is so clean where FD is purchasing my product in the beginning every month. Right now they stop buying every month, they're buying every other month and they're sending mm -hmm. to the FD testing facilities and they're trying to find something bad on me, but they can because there's nothing bad about us. So, and I'm very transparent because I show pages of pages of lab testing in parts per billion from every microtoxin, from everything. I told my laboratory, if you came up with parts per trillion, give it to me, give it to me. I want parts per trillion, you know? So what happened with Europe and this is really sad. They sell, they say hemp is legal, but they forgot to tell us which part of the hemp. They actually oh. allow only leaves to be legal. Mm, which is and not still, the stem. Okay. Not the main, the buds, the ones that are the okay. head. 
there was the whole medicinal power. I'm not saying leaves are bad for you. No, I'm, I'm sure they're great too. But were the all the terpenes, cannabinoids, and all the power of medicinal is in the head. And they don't allow that head to be actually legalized, but they also saying cannabis is legal, but they say it's just the po- leaves. The leaf part is legal. But again, if you in general public, if you listen in the news, cannabis is legal, hemp is legal. No, no, no. It's not the medicinal part of the hemp is legal. It's the things that really don't matter much to your body is legal. Wow. Wow. My, my head is just popping. Wow. Thank you I'm for fighting. sharing this. Fighting, fighting this one right now. Another one. <laughs> yeah, an aha moment indeed. Well, tell me, what can we expect from Nessa's Hemp in the future? I, I, I do believe you're going to go global. You get past these regulations and restrictions and it's going to be different in every country as you know from asia to africa to canada but uh companies have done it and with your enthusiasm and and the product uh as you've described it i'm sure you will too but what what are you working on for the future i'm working on beyond big things that i believe is going to be so big where it's going to shake the world the way the 9-11 was shaking in the negative, but this is going to be in the positive. And it's so big where I just signed the NDA, be literally signing the contract next week. Um, be putting two compounds together that we have, I can't even say the word cancer because the C word is so dangerous in these days, but it's going to be so powerful and so big. Uh, and it's coming probably in the late fall, early December. And that's why I highly recommend everyone to register on our email email list because we're going to be announcing all over the place. And also we're going to be providing evidence that are being done and cured for 50, 60 years ago. These people are still talking, walking. Um, and it's a book of people, the first and last names. And these people are going to be able to stand in front of a camera and say, this book is written was 30, 40 years ago. And this is me again, again, 30 years later. So it's coming and it's very big. I'm definitely working on a lot of things. I'm also working how to reduce the prices. It's very hard to do because of our very expensive farming processes, extraction processes. Our laboratory testings are tremendous expensive just to prove the quality of the product on each bottle that's been handed to every citizen in America. So, but very big news coming. I promise you, you're going to see this world shining when it comes to Nestle's hemp. All right. I am excited to hear that. Congratulations on all that you've accomplished so far and the publicity marketing that's gone along with all of your hard work. And I'm very, very pleased that we were able to have you, Inessa, on our program today. Tell the people how to find that website and, and get on your distribution list and find you on social media. Where where do they go to find Nessus Hemp? That's exactly where to find it. it's Nessus. Nessus. It's N-E-S-A-S. Nessus Hemp dot com or just google nestles hemp and you're going to be able to find us less than in two seconds there's so much about us right now at this point um we also on the mission to to make the world better place because i've been targeted by human traffickers in the past so portion of our uh, funds goes to uh navy seal groups to save children from human trafficking and sex trafficking so um yes we definitely on the mission to make the world better place and there's a lot going on in my my hobby world, which is, as I mentioned a couple seconds ago. Mm-hmm. So I'll be announcing something very big also uh, soon. I'm building a very amazing trusted platform to save children and women from, from human trafficking. So uh, thanks to Nestle's Hemp uh, funding, because then it gives me freedom to, to, to help people. And also be working to build a church in Pakistan. We have over 100 kids. Um, I just installed the water systems for them. So we pray uh, every Saturday. They don't speak in English, but I'm getting them full uh, full 
a full actual time English teacher for my kids in Pakistan. So I want them to learn English. So when I'll get there in a year and a half from now, I want them to speak with me. I want to empower them. I want to share a message with God. So I'm super excited. There's a lot of great things going on. That's why I can't sleep. <laughs> Indeed there are. Indeed there are. This has been a fantastic interview. I, I've learned a lot. It's I love your passion and enthusiasm about what you're doing. You're a great spokesperson for your company in addition to being a, a scientist <laughs> as as well. Thank you for the education. And I know this is going to help a lot of people just to choose safe and effective products and, and think differently about what, what you're looking for when you make those purchases for things that are going into our, our very delicate, wonderful body. So once again, thank you for joining us today, Nessa of Nessa'sHemp.com. We'll drop all this information in the show notes, and we look forward to seeing what's coming next. Thank you so much.